Heidi ho my peeps and welcome to another Dollar Tree dinner. Tonight we are doing a Thanksgiving feast casserole. This is all from the Dollar Tree uh, with the exception of I picked up some ground turkey breast which you can use or if you want to use all Dollar Tree stuff you can use the diced ham. I've got uh, three containers of diced ham to do this um, the third one to do this uh, casserole with. I'm going to go ahead and do it with the ground turkey that I picked up at the grocery store for I think six bucks or so and uh, because I don't want this to go bad but if this were all Dollar Tree which it certainly could be you could use the diced ham instead. So what you use is um, two containers of stuffing mix whatever you like. I found these dried cranberries um, at the Dollar Tree you also use a can of gravy. I'm using the chicken gravy. You use one package of sweet potato fries that get uh, diced up and put in with your stuffing mix. You use a little bit of chicken broth to moisten the whole thing. And then that gets added to some ground turkey breast that you have previously browned, which I am going to do that here in just a bit. And there you go. Basically, you have an entire feast all in one casserole dish. So let's put it together. All right, so what we're going to do is start with um, the ground turkey breast. I've got some coconut oil in the bottom of this pan. This is a prepackaged one pound container of turkey breast. Again, like I said, if you don't have access to fresh ground turkey, you can use canned turkey or at the um, Dollar Tree, you can use these uh, these cans of diced ham. We're not going to use them, but I wanted to show that to you if you want to go all Dollar Tree on this. So, just going to put this in our pan, like so. And um, I'm going to I'm going to brown this up. I won't make you sit through that, but if you have a little bit of turkey poultry seasoning, put it in there. I don't. I have a little bit of thyme, so I'm going to put about oh, a half a teaspoon of thyme. I also have some sage that has been sitting up in my container, so I'm going to put a little bit of sage. Oops. There you go, about a half a teaspoon of each. And that's, uh, that's good enough for, for poultry seasoning, so I'm going to go ahead and finish browning this, and then I'll get back to you. One more thing you can add if you want to kind of flesh this casserole out a little bit, make it a little bit more authentic, go ahead and add a diced up um, white onion and four or five stalks of celery. I've got four stalks of celery there. So I'm so our, we're all browned up here and I'm going to go ahead and chop that up and it will go into this bowl. Okay, so what you see in the bowl now is the, I've got the chopped up celery and onion down at the bottom. I put that in first, then I dropped in two boxes of stuffing mix. I have, I decided to use the uh, chicken stuffing mix as one flavor and then I put in a, a box of the cornbread. You can do it any way you want, whatever stuffings you want to use. I just happened to pick those up um, when I was at Dollar Tree, so we've got those in. In addition to that, I've put in an entire bag, let me get it, of these Welch's dried cranberries, which I found at the Dollar Tree. So we have our ingredients starting to come together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up this bag of sweet potato fries into little cubes. They're going to go into this big bowl. Then I'm going to dump the ground turkey in and then we will go to the next step. All right, so I have chopped up the bag of sweet potato fries that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take this, I'm going to transfer it into this bowl. I've already done a little pre-mix on the bowl. You can see all the ingredients so far have been mixed up. I have preheated my oven to 350. Once I, um, I've also, the chicken, uh, the turkey's also in here. So once I put these into the bowl, what I'm going to do is add enough chicken broth to moisten it to the proper moistness, you know, before you, just like you would stuffing mix. 
Um, I don't know how much of this I'm going to add. I will add it and then I will tell you how much I added so you'll know. Just FYI, this chicken gravy is to be heated up and ladled on top of the pieces of, of uh, casserole when you serve it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that together and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to put it in the pan. All right, so we have all the ingredients um, in our casserole dish. We're ready to start ladling it into, or rather in our bowl, we're ready to start ladling it into our two casserole dishes. Um, I am going to grab my Dollar Tree spray coconut oil. It's oh, way back there. And I'm going to give my casserole dishes a little spray of the coconut oil to kind of pre pre grease them. You know this is not a very this is not a very greasy mixture, so you're going to need a little extra oil on the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and that. There we go. I love spray coconut oil. It's wonderful. I was so glad to see Dollar Tree was carrying it. Okay, so now I'm going to get my little cup measuring thing out. Here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and fill these two casserole dishes. So I'm going to fill those up and then I'll get back to you once they're both filled. All right, and here we go. The, it uh, filled two of these 9x9 nine nine casseroles beautifully with nothing left over. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chicken broth and I am going to pour it on top of the ingredients in the cast that are already in the casserole dishes. This will allow it to steam up nicely and um, stick together and it will be beautiful. I would say I just poured in about three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna do the same thing. Well, no, it's about a cup. Do the same thing here. It's about a cup. I think this one needs just a little bit more. So what was that in volume? It was about half of the volume of the chicken broth container. The rest of this is gonna be used for our, um, our Thanksgiving meal in a few days. So I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator. And the last thing you wanna do once you've moistened these things is you wanna take your foil and you want to very tightly cover these casserole dishes because you want the steam to rise up from the bottom and get all this part wet and then drop down off of the foil and, you know, kind of self-baste it itself. Um, I, if you really want to get fancy, you can dot the top of this with butter or margarine, which would make an absolutely lovely taste and would also give it a little bit more oil. Um, it's not necessary. You can leave it just like this which is the way I'm going to do it. I'm not going to dot it with any butter margin. I'm going to go ahead and cover these, stick them at the, in the oven for 350 for about an hour. Then we'll come back and show you the results. All right, we were in the um, oven for a little over an hour. I'm going to take the foil, take it back. You can see that steaming nicely. And now what we're going to do, I went ahead and I shook, sorry about that, I shook my chicken gravy pretty well, popped the top. Now what I'm going to do is pour a little bit over each casserole. So, just gonna pour it on the top, like so. Get around to the corners. And you could use any gravy you want. From what I had to choose from at Dollar Tree, the chicken looked like the most intelligent choice. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Pour it around like so. Um, alternately, you can put this gravy in a pan. You can heat it up or heat it up in the microwave till it's warm and spoon it on individually as you serve it. The reason I'm doing this is because I know that the heat that's still coming out of this, these casseroles, is going to warm that gravy and cause it to um, seep down into the cracks and crevices, 
without actually cooking in it. So it'll kind of keep the flavor and texture of the gravy a little bit separate from the rest. And that's part of what I wanted to avoid. It's just about the whole can. Part of what I wanted to avoid was having this be too mushy. That's why the gravy didn't go on first. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cover it back up. I'm gonna let it sit until it's mouth cool and we are going to test it. And here is Mr. Grant. He is going to give the casseroles a taste test. So that's what it looks like. It's got its gravy on it that have it's warmed up beautifully and it comes out of the pan nicely and then so it'll it'll cut well and then you need a fork huh sweetie that's what i need okie dokie yeah that's important that it comes out you know holding together all right here we go we're gonna see if it tastes decent little of everything, yeah. Tastes like Thanksgiving. It tastes like Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's exactly what it's supposed to taste like. Yeah. All right. So Very good. So people who, who don't want to do a full-on meal but want the taste of Thanksgiving or want to share it with others can put together this casserole, and it gives you all your Thanksgiving tastes with the exception of mashed potatoes and green bean casserole. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Grant. You're welcome. Bye.